a male in his 40s presents to urgent care with a cough and has a chest x-ray. He has an existing medical condition, but due to a language barrier, it's difficult to take a thorough past medical history. What's the diagnosis? Let's go through the case. Now this x-ray is a striking one. There is a large mass on the right, overlying the right hyaline. Now the word overlying is important here. Notice how we can see the hyla vessels through the lesion. This is something known as the hilum overlay sign. What this means is that this lesion can't lie within the middle mediastinum, otherwise the hyla vessels would be obscured. If this was within the middle mediastinum, we would be thinking about a primary lung cancer or lymph node enlargement, and so where this lies changes the differential. So now we are thinking this lies within the anterior mediastinum or posterior mediastinum, with anterior mediastinal lesions statistically more likely. The differential diagnosis for an anterior mediastinal lesion can be thought of as the four T's, thymomas and other thymic epithelial lesions, teratomas and other germ cell tumours, thyroid goiter with retrosternal extension, and terrible lymphoma, had to make it fit in some way. However, there is something on this x-ray that points us away from an anterior mediastinal lesion, and more towards the posterior mediastinum. Have a look on the left, we can see the descending aorta here, and this line here is a left paraspinal line. We don't always see this well on a chest x-ray and it represents the interface between the left lung and the paraspinal soft tissues. Now if we do see it, it should be a nice straight contour. However, we can see there is a bulge right here. Now the spine is adjacent to the posterior mediastinum, so any change in contour of the left paraspinal line must represent an abnormality in the posterior mediastinum. This changes the differential from a single anterior mediastinal lesion to probable bilateral posterior mediastinal lesions. So what are the causes of a posterior mediastinal mass? The list is long, but let's think about some of the more common causes and split it up into categories. Nerve roots arise from the spinal cord within the posterior mediastinum, so think about neurogenic tumours such as a schwannoma or neurofibroma. A discitis with a paravertebral abscess can also show on a chest x-ray as a posterior mediastinal lesion. Also think about gastrointestinal causes. Here we have esophageal duplication cysts or simply a dilated esophagus or hiatus hernia. Now remember that the descending aorta runs in the posterior mediastinum, so vascular causes include an aneurysm of the descending thoracic aorta. Also in this category, I will include extramedullary hematopoiesis, where there is production of blood cells outside the bone marrow and can present as paravertebral fat-containing masses. Lastly, don't forget malignant causes of a paraspinal mass, such as lymphoma or metastatic disease from elsewhere. The patient underwent a non-contrast CT which showed a few different findings. Have a look at this coronal view. We have lobulated well-defined paravertebral masses within the posterior mediastinum, larger on the right. And we can see on the right some of this contains fat given the low density here. Next, have a look at the left ventricle. Now normally on a non-contrast CT, the heart should be homogeneous. Interestingly, it's been shown that if you can make out the wall of the left ventricle and a dark blood pool on a non-contrast CT, it is likely the patient is anemic. And I think we just about have that sign here, so this patient probably has anemia. We can see small calcified nodes in the mediastinum and also flecks of calcification within the liver. Lastly, the spleen is enlarged measuring 17 centimeters in craniochoral dimension. So let's put all of this together and try and come up with a unifying diagnosis. If we deal with the calcified nodes and flecks of calcification within the liver first, when we see this, it usually represents a previous granulomatous process such as sarcoid or previous infection, including TB and histoplasmosis. Now, paravertebral masses aren't really a common manifestation of sarcoid, and there is no vertebral end plate abnormality to suggest a discitis related to TB, so it could well be that this calcification is unrelated to the rest of the findings. Otherwise, we have bilateral fat-containing paravertebral masses, an enlarged spleen, and possible anemia. In terms of a differential, lymphoma is a possibility, although doesn't explain the fat within the paravertebral lesions. Neurogenic tumours can contain fat, but wouldn't explain the other findings, which leads us to extramedullary hematopoiesis. On further probing, the patient had a history of beta thalassemia, which makes extramedullary hematopoiesis now the top differential. Here there is production of blood cells outside the bone marrow. Any condition where there is inadequate production of blood cells can predispose to this, such as thalassemia, sickle cell, leukemia and myelofibrosis. Within the thorax, like this case, we can see fat-containing paravertebral masses and sometimes even rib expansion. Within the abdomen, there can be splenomegaly like we have here and also hepatomegaly. Peritoneal nodules and soft tissue surrounding the kidneys can be seen, with the latter difficult to differentiate from lymphoma or Erdheim-Chester disease. 
Now, importantly, biopsy of any lesion can be very high risk given the propensity to hemorrhage, so it is really important to recognize these features whenever you have a condition that can predispose to it. In this case, an external scan from abroad was sourced and showed no change in the masses compared with three years prior. So given the history of thalassemia, the findings were put down to extramedullary hematopoiesis. The key to evaluating this chest x-ray was firstly recognizing the hilum overlay sign, which excluded pathology within the middle mediastinum, and secondly looking for any abnormality within the posterior mediastinum that can point you away from an anterior mediastinal mass.